for you start putting transmissions and drive shafts under the car. I want to get this e-brake out. So I'm clean up clean up some rust under there. And I gotta replace the e-brake cable anyway. So I'll we'll get this out. Get this ratty ass carpet out of here. I'm gonna pull up the uh, passenger seat yet. Get to that one. We start patching that floor over there. I uh, just got no time. take that off all right so apparently that screw held the whole thing on I thought it would just be that wire but that worked out well found an excuse to use my tiny little ratchet so let's get that other screw out all right so I've been wrestling around with this trying to figure out how to get that cable off looks like I got two jam nuts to take off Awkward. Alright, we got it out. That's the two nuts that came off. And you can see it's got a kind of a D-shaped threaded rod. There's <sighs> a lot of funk going on here, but kind of went through that hole there. So we'll clean that, but for now going back there. <laughs> I'll put these nuts back on so we don't lose them. Or, well, <sighs> we'll put them right here. I'm gonna figure out how to get this out. So I managed to get the cable unhooked from underneath. Apparently this is all that comes through. This part hooks to this part. And then this cable hooks in like that. It actually pulled on these cables and they do move. Pretty ratty. Okay. Might try to soak them. Hit them with a wire wheel. Some rust -oleum. I don't know. Maybe undercoat them or something. We'll see how much a new one costs. All right, well, we got a hold of a pressure washer. Got the inside pretty well blasted. You can tell there was brake fluid leaking around this area at one time. Nice hole rotted through there. Battery leakage, need a hole through there. Got that coated with a little bit of rust reformer already. And we're gonna take care of this spot right now. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way. I'm just gonna tape all this off, but I'm lazy. And it's hot. Wisconsin boy in the heat. Right 
Alright, we got the electrical contacts. We'll get those lines. One of those comes out anyway, but what the hell? Get behind the motor mount here. sure I need it down there maybe around this little hole here I took that rubber boot out right, maybe around the back of the master cylinder that master cylinder will be replaced right, any other maybe around the back side of this hole So I got a half-ass tape job going on here. Wires kind of peeled off to the middle. Let's uh, put some primer down. All right, so that was one whole can. Brand new. Kind of a half-ass spray job. Didn't bother to get the master cylinder much it's gonna be replaced someday um, just kind of got the top of the cross member there um, you can do the back side from underneath probably won't do the front side until that rack comes out I'm sure that rack's gonna not going to last forever so don't worry about it then so we'll let this dry I forgot how long does this take to dry? Apply top coat or recoat within one hour or after 48 hours. All right, let's wait an hour. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> got two coats of blue, cobalt blue eye, rust oleum. It's very difficult to sneak a can around all these freaking cables and wires and stuff. <clears throat> Surprised I don't have any runs. There probably will be one around there. <clears throat> but it'll be fine. Looks like I got some tree garbage blown in there already. Looks better than crusty old slimy tan and undercoating and oil and grease and dirt. It's all blue. Give it a little bit to tack up and we'll pull this tape off. <clears throat> Alright. 
So we're going over motor mounts for V8 Pinto. Top here are Pinto 2.3 liter mounts. Bottom here, V8 Mustang 2 mounts. Um, so I overlaid them on this paper and traced them out. This is the passenger side, so that would be these two here. The more straight up and down one is the Pinto, of course. Um, and I lined up the front corner, front hole. So the back hole is off about an eighth of an inch. Um, it appears that the Pinto has about a three inch hole pattern and Mustang to a three and an eighth. So <clears throat> let's see the bottom ones on the Pinto. It looks up like about four and a quarter. Mustang 2 has a has a flange instead of that or angled flange, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so I think there's enough slop in the hole on the frame that I don't have to do any anything to bolt this in. But the driver side Looks to be the same, three inch Pinto and three and an eighth Mustang two. Bottom, four and a quarter. So I think what I wanna do is bolt this in the car, set the motor on it, make sure it's in a position that I like, and then we're gonna make brackets that will bolt into these holes and to these holes on each side. So that'll be fun. I think I'm gonna take a piece of angle iron that'll come up underneath here. We'll bend it like that. So on the, on the part that lays flat here, we'd have to put a notch. I'm looking at it now, that notch is gonna end up real close to that hole, so we're gonna have to get creative. So cut a notch in the angle, bend it, weld it together, drill our holes in. Fun stuff. All right, so I got them in here. Just kinda put the bolts in with the nuts on the end. Uh, there's plenty of room. Holes are pretty big, so I think it'll work. So I'm get them tightened up, trying to keep them kind of centered up in there, and see how it goes. <clears throat> All right. So we got the top bolts tightened down. Went ahead and kind of cleaned up the factory wiring. Not really put back to the original spot, maybe except for right there. Um, I think a lot of that has to be phased out. I think when I wire in the V8, it's going to have its own parallel factory, parallel not factory wiring harness. Um, but like this stuff, we're gonna have to figure out what to happen to, I suppose like the alternator needs to go on this side. I suppose the right thing to do would be to separate this and bring it all around to that side, but You might just put another harness above it and splice on this end. Uh, things like the charge cable here is too small anyway. Uh, look at this, like where does this go? Does it go all the way around here? It must go... In here somehow, but yeah, 
the kit I bought. Well, let me just go get the kit. Okay, so I bought the PA Performance Genuine Conversion Kit. Uh, it came with, I believe this is a fuse, mega fuse. So that will have to go here somewhere. Lift this in. I can't do it with one hand. But anyway. Um, it came with wire on here, but I don't think it'll be enough to get up to that up to that relay star solenoid. Um I think maybe it'll be mounted down here somewhere. I don't know. <clears throat> but it also came with this. Somehow, somehow this works with the 3G alternator. To replace this but still function the dash light, like if your alternator fails. So, this also has to come over on the side. I'm thinking maybe right there. I don't remember what this was for, these holes. I'll make an adapter plate to mount it like that. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that. Uh, I got the clutch cable kind of routed down to where the clutch is going to be. Speedo cable kind of routed down. I'm thinking that's not gonna reach. Maybe? Eh, I suppose it would if the mounts are back there. But on the Pinto, it was on the passenger side. This time it'll be on the driver's side. So, more stuff routing along the manifold. I don't like that. I got the brake, front brake lock valve in. We'll have to take off this, this line here and replumb that through here. I need some fittings. I need some fittings for here. Uh, but yeah, that's it. It's been so damn hot here, but I think I want to get the motor in here and then make the brackets. As you, as you see, it's kind of lifted up. I need some weight on it to push down. Uh, yeah, the motor still has work to do. Um, I gotta put the distributor in, um, the oil pump, oil pan, yeah, I don't know, I don't have to go through that. Cleaning out the paint that I should clean it to weld the weld the hole shut. <laughs> All right, we won't paint that part.
Alright, so this is the shifter hole. Cross member. This is where the e brake cable comes through. We got some of the rest cleaned up. E brake cable mount. I think that's a rust hole, but it almost looks like it was just blown out from welding. So, you can get more of this corrosion half ass wire brushed off. Hit it some, with some rust reformer. And I think that's all it's going to get is rust reformer. Doesn't pay to paint before I finish welding the floor. So let's get back to it. Safety squib. Gotta have the safety squib. All right, let's switch cup style. All right, well, the transmission area is pretty gunky, but there's so much welding and cutting that's got to go on over there that I don't think it, bother, I don't think it pays to bother to uh, go too nuts on that. I just don't quite understand what was going on here with this e-brake bracket all right so we got rust reformer sprayed up in there I think we'll just leave it as that you can see I got plenty of work to do there and there and there and there and there and there pick and choose what we want to do.